hi everybody welcome to my channel please do make sure that you are subscribed to this channel and also like the video before we book okay listen you guys so i know some of you have been um waiting for me to comment on this interview that umo san Tsebeshe did talking about Mosam Selig, because some of you sent me I'm a link, but here is an interview. I watched it, you guys, and I watched it on a Friday. And part of it, uh, with me not coming to do the commentary, was because I didn't have time. But part of it, I was kind of waiting to see if Mosam Selig does respond to what Musa Zabesha said in that interview, but. Even with him not having commented, you guys, I have to say that I do believe everything that this Mosa Zebeshe uh, guy is saying. I believe him. I believe him. I am still willing to uh, hear Umosam Seleku out should he decide that he's going to come out and tell his side of the story. But I definitely believe uh, Mosa, the other Mosa on this one. So for those who are clueless, you guys, Mosa Ntabeshe is uh, this guy that did an interview in uh, at the podcast called Siabonga Ngula Lamini. Okay? But if you just Google Mosa Ntabeshe, it would probably to come up. Now, he used to work with Mosa Ntabeshe on the show. In fact, he was part of the team that pitched the idea of this show. Okay. Before he started working on this show, he says that he was like an artist uh, manager. Okay. And they had managed artists like Unaima K. And then they went their separate ways. But he had experience, like more experience in the TV entertainment space than Umosam Selegu. So it was a thing of Umosam Selegu had resources in terms of like money and then Umosa Nzabeshe had knowledge, you know, and skills. So him and this other guy helped Umselegu to put the proposal together. And they had agreed that they were going to be paid 200,000 rands. They were going to get producer credit on the show. And also they were going to get 2% on uh, the production company. Thanks, Ma, the way that I understood him. But they ended up walking away from the deal with 10,000 rands each, the two of them. They never got the 200,000 rands that they were promised and they never got the producer credits on the show and they never got the 2% that they were promised. Can you imagine you guys watching Utanonit's Temple and watching that scene that where Umseliku is buying his wife's cars? Can you imagine? Like you are sitting at home and struggling with your family to make ends meet and this show is on channel 161 it's being watched by so many people and you can see how successful it's going to be and most of the things they are showing on the show were your ideas and then you see this man there buying his wife's cars you get a car, you get a car, you get a car. Everybody gets a car. And you are sitting at home struggling with your wife. But that was your pitch that you put together. <laughs> I can imagine you guys. And especially because the sun on this temple is talked about everywhere. Like there's no uh, hiding from the sun on this temple. Because I imagine that if that happened, you probably don't even want to see the show. You probably don't even want to hear... The, the, the theme song of the show because you can just imagine how you were robbed out of money you were supposed to make from the show and you didn't make it like how greedy was that of Mosam Selegu how I mean would it hurt him 
for season if he just said well, it's okay guys the, maybe the agreement was only for season for one season and he just pays them that two hundred thousand rands and he gives them um whatever two percent whatever for the season one and then afterwards it's like now you guys you've helped me with season one now i'm going to continue on my own like that season that they pitched he should have at least given them what they had agreed upon how greedy was that i believe that guy you guys remember umselego has referred to a certain brother that he used to work with unumfowabo that they used to work together what happened to that brother how come they don't work together anymore? And also, if you've been watching Usanunasim, you will know that Umsele doesn't have any of his family around. And one episode uh, in a diary session, he said the reason he does not have his family around, it's not like Bafa, Bantubago, Itlobozakazaf, no, Bakon. But he said that they don't like him because he is successful. Now I'm like, now I know for sure that something funny went on with your family because the story that this guy is telling, <laughs> I believe him, you guys. But there is a part of me that is disappointed. As much as Umsele is not like my favorite person, but I didn't think that he, he would scam people like that. Also, there's an element to the story, okay? So when they were planning or still putting the pitch together for the show, the idea was that as part of uh, doing the show, they were going to be training students in production, whether the student was going to be trained in using a camera or sound or whatever. But they, they, they were a group, there was a group of students that were supposed to be part of uh, shooting the show those students were supposed to be provided with transport given food and i guess you guys maybe a stipend it doesn't mention it but i'm just imagining you know and that thing ended up the students ended up having to quit because they were not being given money for transport they were not being given food while they were coming to work on set while shooting season one even him, he ended up quitting when he realized that Musam Selugu had no intention after they had put together the pitch and pitched the show themselves. Because they trusted him, they let Mnet to uh, communicate with him or Musam Selugu. So he double-crossed them. But not only did he do that to them, the students too. So the students went uh, when they were shooting, but they were not provided with what they were supposed to be provided with. And so all of the students ended up quitting. So even him, he ended up saying, okay, then it's fine. Because he did not want to give them what they had agreed on. Guys, how great. I, I mean, since season one, I'm sure Musab Selego has made many 200,000s. Many 200,000s. Even if we can say good see, reality shows don't make that much, but if you are part of production, I guess you make something. Okay. Now, outside of the show, because they did the show as a family, they've made more money outside of the show. The wives have other shows that they do. Their businesses are doing even better because they've done the show. So they've made about 200,000 after season one. Even Jay, just now, he can still call those guys and say, listen, we had a misunderstanding, but I know, because I'm sure he remembers that they had agreed on that 200,000 rents. I'm sure he remembers that. He can still go back and say, okay, guys, at best, let me just pay you 200,000 rents. He paid them 10,000 rents each and used their ideas on the show, the, the ideas that they came up with. How greedy was that? And then just moved on like nothing happened. And I wanted to, I was, I was thinking, Woodsy, 
the wives probably uh, they don't know but there's a mention of makumalo because at some point makumalo even asked this guy to manage her and he says yes he did manage her even got her uh, a few gigs before they went their separate ways so makumalo must have known uh, about some of the dealings that they made with Umosam Selego, this guy. And also, Umatele, because he says that they had to convince Umatele and explain to her the concept of the show because Umatele didn't want to do the TV show. And he says that right now, when he meets Umatele at the mall or something, Umatele would just pretend with whoever that she's with because she'll be trying to ignore him. Why are they ignoring him? If they worked together and everything went well, why are they now ignoring him? And you'll never hear Musam Seligu say anyway uh, that, you know what, at the beginning, the person that helped me, like in recognition and verbal in an interview, maybe when we started the show, the person that helped me was Um Musa uh, and I think there's another guy called Um or something like that. Like, you know, just say that. I'm disappointed. As much as I don't like Umselegu, but I didn't think that he's somebody that would do something like that to somebody, especially in a workspace. But then when I think about the whole thing of him not really getting along with a certain brother that, that they used to work together with, which he said, yeah, in Guti, they used to work together with, uh, I don't know if Uputuake or Kazinuake, and then something must have gone wrong because they no longer do it. And also this family that just hates you when the whole family hates you, and what did you do? Now, I'm looking at Umsele with the friend, you guys. And then the students, you could have paid the uh, students 1,500 rand a month for transport and giving them food when they were shooting. Ben Kham still here watching that interview. So part of it shocked me, but I really, I, I genuinely do believe that guy. I do believe it. But I feel like Um Selegu can still do something. Pay that guy uh, his money and the other guys will pay them their money, at least for season one. And then he just went on his um, Instagram and started posting about the show, talking about how he was convincing his wife for some time. He was trying to convince his wife for some time to do the show and they didn't want to do it. But as above my thing could say 2016, why don't you mention that Umosa was the one that helped you to explain to your wives uh, the concept of the show in a way that they understood it so that they agreed to do the show? Why don't you mention? How come he doesn't mention him? Let's say that there are things that this guy is talking about that are untrue. I don't think that he will totally lie about working with him. Why would he not mention him? Anyway, it's disappointing. It's very, very disappointing. And I know this guy is uh, saying, what's he? he doesn't really believe that it was about money for Muslim Selig. It was about fame. But I feel like, then, but it was about money because he could have just been like, guys, you know what? I don't want to work with you anymore. I'm going to go with the Mnet people and the production company that the Mnet has uh, provided us with. Uh, so we go our separate ways. Here is your money. If it wasn't about the money, he would have given them their money. He clearly didn't want to pay them the money. And then he only paid them uh, 10,000 rands each. <sighs> Guys, I don't want to lie. I was disappointed, but I know that he's probably not going to respond. And then he's going to wait for, which season are we waiting for? Season eight or season seven, whatever season that we're waiting for, he's going to have a diary session the way he tells them what to do. Because I 
instead of calling this guy and, and paying him his money, he'll sit there in a diary session and try and convince us because this guy just hates him because now he's successful. Because that's what he says about his family. He says his family hates him. All of his family hates him because he's now successful. That's what he said on, on one episode. I shame. But I'm disappointed. They knew it, according to this guy. Crooks. I grid. Anyway, you guys, listen. Tell me what you think about it in the comment section. Do you believe this guy? Do you uh, feel like you want to hear Musam Selegu's side of the story? Why would he not just pay them? Instead, he went ahead and bought his wife, wife's cars on national TV. Obviously, you do have 200,000 rands if you're buying your four wives' cars all at the same time. Obviously, you do have 200,000 rands to pay the people that you were supposed to pay. And also, you got they got budget for everything from Mnet. But here, guys, it's a lesson too that even when you trust people, even when you trust people, when you work with them, have paper. Have paper because they will betray you. Anyway, tell me what you think about this in the comment section. Like the video before, Pumegona, share it with your friends, with your family, and even with strangers in a tanda. Cool.